In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this dual wattage ultrasonic cleaner. This unit worked perfectly fine. One day I plugged it in and then I got absolutely nothing on the display. Ultrasonic cleaners are extremely useful for deep cleaning watches, jewelry, flux from circuit boards, clogged fuel injectors, small carburetors from lawn and garden equipment, coins and other items from metal detecting, glasses, dental tools, and much more using the proper cleaning solutions. As usual, if you'd like to purchase one of these units, I'm going to place a link in the video description area where there'll be a list of these that you can look through. And if you decide to purchase one, you'll be supporting my channel. Also be sure to use one of the provided coupon codes to save you money with your purchase. Now the way these work, and hopefully I'll be able to fix this unit in this video so I can demonstrate, an ultrasonic transducer, which I'll show you in a minute, is driven between 20 and 400 kilohertz, and it's used to create cavitation bubbles that agitate the solvent to easily dislodge dirt and other debris from items that are soaking inside that liquid. Cavitation bubbles, also known as cavities in the solvent, or little pockets or voids, are caused by the fluctuating sound waves produced by the ultrasonic transducer. You can observe a similar effect if you were to look at a boat's propeller spinning at a very high speed underwater. As that propeller is spinning, you're going to see a trail of small bubbles coming off the propeller. Okay, let's get started. Hopefully I can fix this unit and it doesn't end up as scrap. Let me take the screws out of the unit and then I'm going to show you what the inside looks like. And I can also plug this in once it's all taken apart. And you'll see there is no power being applied. And we're going to have to probe the circuit board and test certain components. Okay, this is what it looks like disassembled. The stainless steel tray or pan. The ultrasonic transducer right here. About two and a half inches in diameter. Bonded directly to that pan. So the sound waves are directed into the solution that's inside that pan. Over here is the power supply board, and this is the one we're going to be looking at very closely because no power is being delivered to the control board on this upper part of the unit. These two transistors here are D13005 NPN transistors, high voltage, and they're used to create pulses inside this transformer. Over here, hopefully you can see it down low, that's A. 78L05, that's a 5 volt regulator, 100 milliamp output, and that output is being sent to this board. Okay, let's plug this in, just to show you that it does not work, and then we're going to be doing some tests. Okay, just to show that it does not work, let me just plug this in, you can see it's active, the plug. Okay. And normally you would push this right here, and you see the power light come on. Hold it down, and you can see it's doing absolutely nothing. Okay, let's take a closer look at that board. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look right over here. There's a glass fuse. I just want to make sure that's not blown. It would be nice if that's all it was. So let me go over here. It's now on continuity. Great meter. If you don't have one, be sure to watch my other video. You'll see the link posted at the end of this video as an end card. All right, so let's go over here now when I touch this together. All right, and these tweezers are super useful too. So now let's just go between here. And as you can see, continuity from this side of the fuse to that side of the fuse. So there's no issue with the fuse. Now I want to take a look at the 7805 voltage regulator. I want to see if the output is showing 5 volts. So let me switch to DC volts. Let me just bend this back just a little bit so I can see what's going on in there. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this right here to probe. This is the negative. That's going to go on the center pin of the 78L05. And the positive is going to go on the right side. That'll be the output. 
I should see 5 volts. If I don't, we'll go on to the next step. So let me plug this in and be very careful not to touch anything while I do it. I'm just going to reach in right over here and I'm going to squeeze. That's all I'm going to be doing. Okay, here we go. only getting, that's our problem, I'm only getting 0.12 volts between the center pin which is the negative and the right pin which is the output. Let me just make sure, let me unplug this unit, unplug the board, make sure there's no conformal coating or flux on the bottom of that, scrape it away nice and clean and double check. Okay, let's try it again. No. Move that over a little bit. Nope, 0.126. And let me try pushing the power button to the on while I'm measuring the voltage. Okay, so that's doing nothing. All right, let's take a closer look at the board and see what other components could be a problem. And then we're going to go on and test these two transistors. Now, when I look at the circuit board, I'm looking for components that are most likely to fail. Now, if you look at resistors like this, there's two more here, which you probably can't see. You'll probably just see the one. Two more on this side of the transistor. Those very rarely go. The only time they go is if you see them look black or burned up. So you know not to check those. Those are not a problem. The relays, these are pretty much brand new. The unit's hardly been used. So there's no reason for me to think that the contacts in here are arced and pitted, no longer allowing current to flow. So I'm going to not check into those. The capacitors, these non-polar capacitors, they don't look bad at all. The shape looks good. They're not swollen. And like I said, not enough hours on this to be worrying about these being damaged. So I'm not going to be inspecting these capacitors. Um, the 7805 could be a problem. So that's one thing we're going to have to check if there is power going to this spot. If there isn't power going to the spot, which I could do by just checking the input right now. We'll take a look right now. We'll measure between the left side and the middle to see what the voltage is. If the voltage on the left is very low, that explains why the voltage on the right is not a stable 5 volts. The capacitors, these electrolytics, eh, unless you see them bulging, and especially, like I said, because it's a newer board, there's no reason to think the ESR on these are bad or anything, so I'm not going to be checking those. The smaller resistors, no reason to check them. The diodes, these are 1N, 4007. Very rarely do I see these go. so. Yes, they can go, and it's very easy to check using the digital multimeter, which I may do, but usually these don't go. So I'm really concentrating on, like this diode here, possible that that's faulty. We can check that one. I want to check the 7805 out further, and then I want to take a look at the two NPN transistors. So let's take a look now at the 7805. Let's just measure the input side of that 7805. Let me plug this board back in, and this is already set to DC volts. Let me reach right in here carefully, and negative to the center pin, positive to the left, and just see if there's any voltage on the input side. It's not looking too good. Do it again. Now there's nothing going on there. All right. Now let's take a look over here. Let me check to make sure this power cord is not flawed in any way. Let me measure between the left side of the fuse and the brown wire. See if we get around 120 volts. Okay, so let's go between here and here. 
and we have 118, so that's fine. Okay, so now we know that power is being supplied to this board, but it's not being seen by the 78L05 voltage regulator. And as a result of no power on the input, power is not being supplied to the board inside the unit to turn it on. So what we need to do is find out why there's no power going to this 7805 regulator. The way this circuit's designed is like many others shown on my channel. It uses capacitive reactants to reduce the incoming AC current. It's a transformerless power supply. When the current flows through, it is then rectified using a full wave rectifier. You can see the four diodes. And then to smooth out the AC ripples, that's what the purpose of the capacitor is, the electrolytic. And then right down over here, you see there's about a 2 watt resistor and then this diode, 12 volt Zener diode. So I think I'm going to do now, because at this point here, the 12 volts supplies power to the rest of the circuit, but this also, looking at the traces on the back, is what supplies power over here to the input side of the 7805. Now, if the 7805 has power on the input side and it's not working, another way that you can test it is to desolder it from the board and then using a 9 volt battery you can take the positive connect it to the far left pin and then you can take the negative of the battery connect it to the center pin and then using your digital multimeter on a DC voltage range you can measure the output on the far right pin to the center pin which is a negative and it should be around 5 volts maybe five, five and a half, and that would confirm that this is working properly. But I don't see a need to test this. So let's take a look over here. Let me test a few of these diodes, and then we're going to move forward and take a look at this diode here. Now before I test the diodes, what I'm going to do to eliminate the chance of any interference, I'm going to desolder one side of the diodes, and I'm going to desolder this side of this diode. So let me flip this over, and let's do that. To do that, I'm going to be using my desoldering gun, an excellent tool shown on my channel. Just refer to my product review playlist if you'd like to see this. Okay, those are all undone. Just going to make sure they move out of the way a little bit. And I think the Zaner is right over here. Get it in position. And that's good. All right, so let me push these up out of the way, and then we're going to take some measurements. Okay, we're on a diode test setting right here. And positive. I'm going to try it each direction, make sure it only works one way. Nothing that way, and you can see I lifted up this whole side. Let's try over here now. Perfect, 0.6. Let's try the next one. 0.6, let's flip it around. Make sure there's nothing. Good, good. Let's try the end one. Roughly 0.6, flip it around. Nothing, very good. Nothing, flip it around. Alright, so every single one of these diodes, as expected, no problem at all. Now let's take a look over here at that 4742A, the 12 volt Zener. So let me leave this on the same setting. Let's go in here. Hmm, that does not look too good. Let's flip it around. There we go. Definitely not good. This should not be conducting in both directions. Yep, no good at all. And that is desoldered from the board. So let me flip the board over. We're going to desolder this. And I'm going to take another 12 volt Zener, which I have a bunch of. And we're going to try a new one in there, and we'll see if once that's installed, if 12 volts is generated at the end over here, and if we can end up with 5 volts coming off of the 78L05. If we do, then there's no reason for me to desolder the base pins on the transistors, 
to use the transistor tester, but I may just show you anyway. Okay, let me desolder that and pop in a new one. Okay, so that's disconnected. Let's flip the board over. Get my good old hemostats here. Reach in. And cathode was facing backwards. And you can see on the board there's a symbol for a Zener diode right there. And this right here is the one. Now, a 4742A is supposed to be a 1 watt. This looks kind of small. I don't know why, but it does. This right here is the new one that I have. That's a 1 watt. Uh, I guess they're similar. This one looks a little fatter in diameter. Okay, let's reposition this, solder it back into the board, and apply some power and see what happens. Cathode towards me. Okay. Going to be using the isotip soldering iron, cordless. And going to go right over here around the camera. That was good. Let me just make sure I got that all because I can't see it from my angle. Yep, and that looks good. Now that that's done, we put back the rectifier diodes. double check that from a different angle. Okay, those look pretty good. Let me flip it over, plug it back in, and let's see what happens. Hopefully it works. Oh, baby, there we go. Working perfect. Okay, let me show you the transistor anyway, just in case you had to test one. So let's take a look at those, and then I'm going to put it back together. Now I'm going to show you two different ways that you can test a transistor, an NPN or a PNP. For the first test, we're going to be using a digital multimeter. Now it's important that you look up the part number for your transistor online so you can identify the pinout for the transistor as well as if it's an NPN or a PNP transistor. Over here, you can see I desoldered the base pin on the transistor. And you do that to avoid any false readings with the circuitry that's connected to that transistor. So you're going to take, if this is an NPN, you're going to take the red probe of your digital multimeter while it's on the diode setting. You're going to touch it to the pin that you just desoldered. Then you're going to take the black probe and touch it to the other one, either one. And you can see 0.59, very good. And then you're going to check to the other one in the center. And 0.54. Once you're done doing that, you're going to take the black probe, flip it around, put it on the base pin, touch it here. You should get nothing. And the same goes for the center one. Now when you're testing a PNP transistor, you're going to, instead of using the red probe on the base, you're going to be using the black probe. So you would just repeat the test the same way. When you have the black probe on the base, you should see the 0 .55, 0 .65 reading when you touch there, and then when you touch the center pin. The second way that you can test a transistor is using a component tester, like you see right here, one that I've used on my channel in the past several times. Very inexpensive, around $25 or $30. I have a video showing this. Take each one of these clips, connect it to each one of the leads or pins on the transistor and then you would push this button right here to test and it would give you a readout NPN it'll give you the HFE, it gives you all the specifications on the transistor it also tests MOSFETs and many other components okay let me solder this back put everything back together put some solution inside the cleaner and power it up okay I cleaned this already but lay it in do 30 watts. You select how many minutes. 